Welcome to the Heartbreak to Happiness Show with Sara Davison. If you're struggling with a breakup and you feel shocked, angry, betrayed, devastated, or sad and alone, then this podcast is for you. Best selling author and award winning host Sara Davison shares how you too can get on with your life to heal, grow, and move from heartbreak to happiness. Here's your host, Sara Davison. Welcome back to the show. And today I want to talk about Mother's Day. Yes, how can you enjoy Mother's Day after a breakup? Now, Mother's Day is traditionally a day where we celebrate being a mum and families come together and all those amazing things that mums do are celebrated and recognised. Now, when you've been through a breakup, obviously those normal family traditions aren't going to happen in the same way. And because of this, a lot of my clients say to me that they find it a very lonely time. If there's nobody there to recognize what you're doing, being a single mom can be hard work, right? I know all about that. I've been a single mom since my son was one year old. Um, and it can be really challenging, you know, the late nights, the sleepless nights, if your child isn't feeling very well, the buck stops with you. You've got to work harder, maybe to pay the bills. You haven't got anyone at home that you can lean on necessarily to help you with those decisions. You know, I remember in the early days worrying about how would I cope on my own? You know, how would I know what to do? And oh my goodness, what would happen if I screwed it up? Because that was a big fear. You know, how do I how do I cope as a single parent? And now I know that those questions are totally normal because I hear it every single day from my coaching clients all around the world. So if you are listening to this and you're thinking, oh, I'm really dreading Mother's Day, then please know you're not alone. One of my clients, Helen, was saying to me a few weeks ago now that she was really worried about it. This is her first year having Mother's Day as a single parent. She has two girls and she's really worried about it because usually on Mother's Day, her husband would go shopping with the girls and they would go to a little shop and buy cards and buy little gifts and the girls would be really involved and they would get really excited. And then they would come home and wrap the presents with the dad. And then in the morning, they would run in an early, early, <laughs> super early. You know, what kids are like sometimes five o'clock in the morning because they were so excited to give the presents and make a big fuss of mom and wish her happy Mother's Day. And her ex would buy her flowers. And, you know, the whole family thing was so different. Now she's going to wake up on her own with her two girls. And there won't be cards, there won't be flowers, there won't be a special lunch booked. And she's really worried about how she's going to manage that. Now, this is really common. This is really, really common because, and it's the same with any big day, whether it's Father's Day, whether it's a birthday, whether it's Christmas, those big traditional family days where usually everybody else in the household, the other adults treat you because it's your special day when you're on your own it can be a bit daunting and shine a light and highlight the fact that you are on your own and that can be difficult that can be really difficult and increase those feelings of isolation or loneliness however put the brakes on because I think I truly believe that being a single parent is a gift it certainly is for me and it's a gift that I really really cherish because you have that time on your own, that quality time with your kid, to have that special bond, to have those magic moments, whether it's laughter and clowning around, or maybe it's watching them as they go through those developmental stages, you know, especially if they're young. Like those little things that they master and how they're growing up to become little people. It's just so amazing to watch as a parent. I became a single mum when my son was only one. Now he's 13 years old now. I can't quite believe how fast time has gone. But when he was one, my husband left me and I was devastated. You know, on top of all the other overwhelm, I just seriously did not know how I was going to cope as a single parent. It was never what I signed up to. It was never the fairy tale ending that I dreamed of. You know, and those hamster wheel questions were going around my head of, you know, being terrified of being a failure as a single parent. 
but it's very, very true. And it's very, very normal to have those questions, to have those fears, okay? Because there is so much uncertainty around being a single parent, but that's also confounded by the fact that there's a lot of pressure to be an absolutely fabulous single parent when you're doing it on your own. For the first time, the first few months, it's about learning the ropes. But do you know what? When I look back at my story, it was being a single parent that pulled me through my divorce faster because it gave me a reason to get out of bed. It gave me a reason to motivate myself to do things, to go out, to interact with other people. You know, it kept me moving forward and definitely sped up my healing process. It would have taken me longer to get my life back on track if my son hadn't been so young and needed me so much. But also for my clients who have older children, you know, whether we like it or not, we are a role model for our kids and they are watching us, aren't they? <laughs> we all know that they're watching us. Even the things they think we think they don't know, the, the conversations we don't think they hear. They have a way of hearing. They have a way of finding out. The interesting thing is, though, that they're looking to us to understand what happens when the wheels fall off in life. What happens when we don't get that fairy tale? ending that we signed up for that we hoped for they're going to be looking to us to see well what happens because that then becomes their coping strategy their way of looking at the world so it's super important when we go through tough challenging times that we can turn that into a positive learning experience for our kids now some of you will be going Sarah that's a lot easier said than done and I know I've been there crying those ugly, ugly tears on the bathroom floor. You know, I've been there and I've, I've done that. But I also know that children can be a real motivation to do things better, to step up. And especially as mums, I think we do more for anyone else, especially our kids over ourselves. So if we're thinking, oh, I've got to turn it around for me, that's not usually such a strong motivation as thinking, I've got to turn it around because my kids are watching and I want to give them this gift. This is a life lesson that when the wheels fall off in life, as unfortunately they will do for our kids at some point, someone will let them down. Someone will lie to them. Someone will betray them. Maybe they won't get the job they want or get into the school they want. Whatever it is, as much as we want to wrap them up in bubble wrap and protect them from any pain, we can't do that. That's not life. But what we can do is we can give them the gift of learning powerful, valuable life lessons that will serve them as they get older. So when those things inevitably do happen, they can think, right, how do I cope with this? If they can think back to a time where they've seen you cope with tough times where, yes, you were sad. Yes, there were negative emotions. We all, we all have those. But we express them, we dust ourselves down, we stand back up, and we go on to create a happier, more empowered life. That's the lesson they learn, that it doesn't matter what happens to you in life. That doesn't define you. It's what you do about it that makes you the person you are. And you can come back, you can bounce back, and go on to be even happier, even more confident, even more successful, whatever that is in your life after a tough time. So that's the valuable lesson. So how can we turn Mother's Day around from feeling sorry for ourselves, which I know is tough and I, I'm not diminishing how difficult it is, but how can we flip it into something that's gonna be fun for you and for the kids, okay? And teach them that valuable lesson. Well, you know, if there isn't anyone there that's going to say thank you, maybe there isn't another family member that might come to the rescue and, and get the gifts with the kids and things like that. I know there are some of my clients that have relatives that will step into that role and will gladly do that. However, if there isn't anyone there and you're thinking, I don't know how to do this. Well, I've got some tips to help you turn it around. Okay, so first of all, we need to think about planning in advance. Okay, don't let Mother's Day just roll up and then it be awkward or nothing's happening that's special. Plan it and make it into something that's going to be a really special day for you and the kids. You know, it can be anything. 
forget the old traditions that you used to do with your husband. Forget those because we want to do things differently. We want to create new routines, new traditions that you can do moving forward that have your stamp and the kids stamp on it. Maybe if you've got young kids, you could make a card together on the run up. Sometimes kids make them at school. I know that if they're not doing that at school, then maybe you can buy the card and get some things to stick on the front and make it fun, make it a real sort of fun activity that you can do at home together. If you are thinking your kids are going to be with you or you don't have kids, maybe you can come together with other friends, other single mums or other women that you admire in your life to create a really special celebration, which will be just as fun for you as it will be for the kids. Now, the gift issue. Now, with me, I always take my son, whether it's my birthday, whether it's Christmas, whether it's Valentine's Day, whether it's Mother's Day, I see this as a great opportunity to get myself a little gift. So I always take my son with me. We, he loves these little trips. Even still, he's 13 now. He still loves it. We go to a shopping centre and I find a little shop where I know there's lots of little things that I would like. And I give him some money and he gets to go into the shop and choose something that he thinks I will like. Now, I always say there's no pressure, I'm always going to love whatever you choose. And he really enjoys going in and choosing a little gift and then paying for it and then coming home and wrapping it himself. Now, his wrapping has definitely got better as he's got older. It used to be just a bundle of sellotape when he was very young, but it was very sweet. And what it meant was in the morning, he could still run in and jump on my bed and give me a present. So chuffed with himself. <laughs> and even forgetting it seemed at times I actually knew what he'd wrapped up because I've been there in the store at times when he was super little. But now it's just a really nice way where he can feel that he's contributing as well. And I love it too, because I get a gift. So again, we've got to shift the rules, guys. We create them, we make them up for ourselves. What would work for you, okay? Please don't look at this as you're going to miss out. Things aren't going to happen anymore. Take your control back. What can you do to make this a better day for you? Okay, it might mean digging deep. It might be small steps to start with. But please find something that's going to be enjoyable for you. Even if it's just some time out for you in the day to have some time relaxing. Maybe it's a nice bath. Maybe it's a glass of wine. Whatever for you is going to really help you relax and enjoy the day. Because capturing those special magic moments on Mother's Day as a single parent and making those new traditions are so important. You know, if you are co-parenting with your ex or, or parallel parenting or whatever the parenting dynamic is between you, you know, time with your kids is so, so precious when you're separated and the kids go between two homes. If that bond between mother and child is so unique and it's so special. So it's important to celebrate that. It's important to create a day that makes you happy, even though it might be a completely new tradition, completely new routines. So remember, if you are listening to this and you have been struggling with Mother's Day, you are not alone. You really aren't alone. There are so many other women around the country, around the world, listening thinking, yeah, it's going to be tough. But please know that you can take your power back. You can redesign this just the way you want it. You can make it more fun. You can treat yourself. You can just have some time out or you can choose to make it a really special day for you and your kids. And at the same time, they learn the lesson that even though things change, they can be even better. And remember that if you're doing your best, then that is always going to be good enough. So wishing you all a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you for listening to today's episode and allowing me to help guide you from your heartbreak to your greatest happiness. I look forward to you joining me on our next episode. That's it for today's episode of Heartbreak to Happiness. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review to win a free ticket to one of Sara's virtual retreats. 
The retreats are a transformative combination of live webinars with Sara herself, coupled with empowering online video programs designed to help you cope better with your breakup and start feeling happy again. For more details, head on over to heartbreaktohappinesspodcast.com, where you can also get a copy of Sara's free gift. Thank you and join us again on the next episode for another dose of Heartbreak to Happiness. Happiness.